Hi guys, this video is all about the Peloponnesian factions they've added into RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. It's taken from a longer video I did with Mausolos, one of the historians on the mod. So check that out in the description below and like and subscribe while you're at it or Mr. Cherry will be very upset with me. But I will see you on the video guys, enjoy. So let's move on to the Peloponnese and we'll start with... Ellis. So let's start with Ellis on the western coast of the Peloponnese, right next to the statue of Zeus. Here he is, enjoying himself. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the uh, uh, why is Ellis then in the uh, in the mod? I think you've already shown us why. Basically, <laughs> they control the Olympic Games, they control Olympia, and that of course gave them a great source of of income of prestige and everything else also because they had to keep it open um even in war times for other greeks to participate in the in the olympic games so it was a lot of um responsibility um and they had to also annex some of the um cities around them uh, elis itself as a city was founded relatively late in the fifth century bc but the landscape was already known as um as elis for a long time mm. and we, you can see Leprion on the map, which is just below um, uh, Olympia. And well, now it's uh, to the right of, uh, of yeah, Olympia. <laughs> Leprion was. <laughs> no worries. Um, there was some precious alien. Uh, e well, well, how do you, however you say it in, in English? Uh, procession of Elis. Um, they lost it, however, in the fourth century, in the late fourth century, because they had become too ambitious and tried to conquer more territory and then ended mm. up losing most of what they already had. And in 245 BC, they would ally with the Aetolian League to reclaim Leprion. And that is kind of their role. They are a bit of an anti Achaean power on the Peloponnese. And yeah. the aliens also had a bit of a mixed relationship with Sparta. And um, yeah, they reconquered Leprion together with the Aetolians. Then the Macedonians came back and took it once again. Later, it was forced to join the Achaean League after the Achaean League was destroyed. Um, yeah, it just went back and forth. Um, it was always an ambitious power. It had a very interesting um, institute, a very interesting institution, not just the Olympic Games, but also the Ifibeya, the um, institution for the training and the um, education of young men in, in Elis was quite famous in antiquity. And also um, the one for the girls, actually, who also trained in the gymnasium at times, which was quite uncommon in the ancient world. So the aliens were basically all about all about um, sports and recreation yeah. and um, <laughs> all parts of society. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So they have um, they have a couple of uh, unique units. They've got the alien uh, hoplites and they've got the alien Ephibes. But what does the Ephibes what does Ephibes mean then? Because you did uh, uh, mention the Ephibea slightly then as well. So what does that yeah. actually mean in terms of the units? Because there's a few units with Ephibes in the name. So we have to imagine that um, until the 4th century BC, there was basically no military training in the ancient world. Um, people did not prepare for warfare. They were levied mm. when it was needed. The nobles had the horses. Of course, there was no riding and hunting. That was basically all they did to prepare. And um, modern military historians of the ancient world, such as Rule Conine and Dyke, they, they really stressed this point that there was no training. There was no preparation. Yeah. And then, of course, the Macedonians came along in the 4th century BC and changed everything because Philip <laughs> and Alexander were so successful. Um, and they also had the sort of training system that the Athenians said, huh, the Ephibes, which were usually the young men between the age of 17 and 19 years old, even though some cities could be 15 to 17, sometimes it could also be 19 to 21 or yeah. whatever combination of these ages. Um, they should be trained not just um, in general, like teaching them the language and some philosophical treatises, because of course the education was mainly open for people of uh, the sons of the of the uh, noble and richer citizens, and not everyone. But you could pay for the education of poorer boys, and that also became more common in the Hellenistic period. But out of the example of Athens, everyone now started to set up Ephibeas which is um, an institution for the training of the young men that mm. train in the gymnasium, um, the an uh, like yeah an open stadium-like 
base, train there, um, train their buddies there, and at the same time be instructed in philosophy and uh, whatever, mathematics and all these kind of things. So they would also be instructed person. So it's basically a um, gym with a library attached, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's basically a bit of a mix of that. Of course, they also learned about loads of other things, like their political participation, what they can then do, what kind of clothes do you have to wear. Um, they also taught about laugh and all these kind of things, yeah. of course. And um, <laughs> it's important to know that the Ephibes, um in the military training, they were often stationed in the force that guarded the Shora, the territory of Apollos, city-state. So um, they would receive some military experience by guarding the territory against the incursions of the neighbors. And that's why we usually represented them as, as, as archers, yeah. because they often learned archery and javelin throwing, sometimes horse riding. They did not really train as hoplites, which is quite interesting, because mm. they would end up being hoplites yeah. <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe it was an archaic, maybe it was an archaic um, tradition. But it's also possible that they simply trained as archers because they had to defend the forest and the countryside, and they had to defend yeah. the, um, the 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 farmsteads and all that. And being mobile archers, you can shoot from towers and fortresses against enemies, both Greeks and barbarians who make incursions into t into your territory. That is probably something that was very useful and helpful. Yeah. I'm sorry for the uh, for the crude reduction of the uh, Ephebea <laughs> and, and no, gymnasium no, 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 down no, no, no. to a gym with a library attached. I think that's I think that's going on my list of uh, terrible quotes. Um, <laughs> let, let's talk slightly about um, Megalopolis then, as another emergent faction that can come out of the Antigonids. Now I know there was beef with Sparta with them, but. Uh, exactly why they're uh, emergent here as well. Um, so what are we looking at with uh, Megalopolis, which is here on the map? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Megalopolis, which uh, basically means um, the, the big city, <laughs> the mega city, Megapolis, yeah. uh, comes from there. Um, I mean, the, the geographer Strabo makes a joke about it being uh, the Great Desert in the first century BC, <laughs> mm. because apparently it, it had a huge territory, but it didn't actually have... A population that big. <laughs> oh, um, it was created. It was created by the Bicians, by the Thebans in the fourth century BC, um, against the Spartans. Where after the battles at Mantinea and Leuctra, when they had defeated the Spartiates, which most people will have probably know, heard about in the 370s and 60s, they founded Megalopolis, and um, it was supposed to block Spartan advance north. And as you can see here in 270 BC, this was very much the case. And Megalopolis and yeah. also Argos, which is our next immersion faction. Yeah. And Argos is probably better known than, than Megalopolis, the home of Perseus, the hero, and of course the arch rival of Sparta throughout the archaic and classical period. Both cities were governed by tyrants who were loyal to the Antigonids at this point in time. But towards the third end of the third century BC, both tyrant families would, after the death of Antigonus Gonatas and or respectively his son, I mean, the, the, the starting Macedonian king, who was very successful, respected, and um, a skilled military commander after his death. Both cities um, seceded from Antigone rule, and they would eventually decide to join the Achaean League, which um, had a very um, democratic <laughs> um, system, at least between the cities, and um, promised the tyrants of each city that they, uh, upon joining, would become the strategos, the leader of the league, which is basically as if, um, to make an example uh, of today, if the UK would ask Ireland to join the UK and the current, um, what is it called, Taisoach, the president of Ireland, yeah. would then become the prime minister of the UK for the next, <laughs> for the next <laughs> period. So it's a very strange yeah, thing very the Achaeans did. But, but it was successful. Um, yeah. It made it, it helped them to integrate both cities into the league, even though Argos would switch back and forth several times, which is also they have a good claim to be an independent faction here. And of course, Argos had a, had a famous history and um, both have special units as well, which are also yeah. important. The context of them joining the Achaean League, I think the are guys, as they're called, yeah. they have an Apilecto, a hoplite unit. Yeah. The good old chosen hoplites, um, uh, the, 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 the opposition to the Spartiates, basically. Mm. By Megalopolis uh, has a unit of phalangites, um, yeah. the first 
seen on the Peloponnese at all in 222 BC when the Antigonids armed the Megalopolitans with bronze shields so they could fight in the phalanx against the Spartans. And of nice. course, Megalopolis would become the home of Polybius, the, the historian of the second century BC, to whom we owe much of what we know about this period. So, um, yeah. It was Very a cool. big and essential city, and so was Argos, of course, so both of them um, played a crucial role on the Peloponnese during this period. Um, yeah, fantastic. Really interesting, again. And um, in uh, <laughs> at risk of being terribly reductive once again, but do you know what I call Argos? No. <laughs> Pyrrhus's tile shop. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's hard. Yeah, that's, yeah, no. Is that too soon? <laughs> no, no, well, well. Uh, Moscow Flaka is the big Epirus fanboy. Only 2,200 so. years ago, so, uh, yeah. Well, 2,300 years ago. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not I'm not concerned by that, I have to say. Like, maybe, um, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Moscow is, but, um, well, I guess you didn't, you didn't, um, you didn't, um, Compared to the retailer uh, owned by Sainsbury. Yeah, so. yeah. I <laughs> was more of an I, educated breakdown. See, yeah. I only thought I didn't know whether like that would be Americans would know about that as well because like yeah, Argos and yeah, they used to have yeah. adverts. What was it? They used to have adverts as like just just go to Argos or shop at Argos or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, if you want to get yeah, your yeah. roof tiles, best place to come. You'll get a really up close view. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. It's a lost opportunity. Really, Sorry really again. Don't sell <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's such a lost opportunity. For anyone that doesn't know what we're referencing there, like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have to go watch my Paris video for that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Messine, let's, uh, let's move to Messine or Messene. I don't know which way uh, you want to pronounce it, which way the, Greek, the best Greek way to pronounce it. I like to say Messene. Most people like to say Messine. Uh, but yeah, they're down here next to Sparta. Yeah, I think um, I think the second E is long, if I'm not wrong. So it would be something like Messene or something like that. But in any case, most people will know this region because of the um, the Hellas of Sparta. Because obviously in the in the Achaic period, Messenia, Messenia, whatever. I can't settle on, on either pronunciation. <laughs> um, it was um, occupied by the Spartans in two wars, and then the um, the population was forced to live as halots, as serfs, as mm. semi-slaves, basically. Um, and there's, of course, the legend of the Cryptea, which we um, decided to believe because we have them as a unit of the Spartans, yeah. an institution for the Spartan Ephibes, so to say. Um, mm. They don't have Ephibes, they have the Cryptea, who had... According to legend, well, Plato, was it Plato, Plutarch, Aristotle, one of them says, they had to live in the wilderness of Messenia for one year and murder at least one Messenian so that they would always live in terror and fear of Spartans. Mm. Yeah, that's the good yeah, Thanks. Um, yeah, as you can see, I wrote even Spartan teenagers are badly <laughs> threatened. Badly, <yeah. laughs> Actually, in the same battle, in, in the Battle of Zelazia in 222 BC, the same battle in which the Megalopolitans fought as uh, Bronx Shield Phalangites, in this battle, the Cryptea is also mentioned by Plutarch as fighting on the side of the Spartans. Mm -hmm. Because in this battle, the Megalopolitans, the Achaeans, and the Macedonians were fighting against the Spartans. And as you can already tell from the fabulous coalition lined up against Sparta, Sparta was defeated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, the Messanians often um, try to regain the independence from Spartans, often without success. But yeah. in 371 BC, um, when Megalopolis was founded at the same time, Thebans also made sure that Messina would be independent again. And Sparta was much weakened at this period. So um, it could remain independent and successive alliances with, with Athens, Macedon, and later Aetolia led to them joining the Aetolian League, actually, 245 BC, along with Elis, um, to, to protect themselves against the Spartan threat. But of course, that didn't help, <laughs> because <laughs> our dear Aetolian friends will remember the story how they betrayed the Acarnanians, and they decided it would be a good idea to plunder the territory of the ally in 222. <laughs> Upon which oh, um, they joined the Achaean League uh, <laughs> in the north of the Peloponnese. 
But 10 years later, they also ruled that decision and they went back to the Etonian League. Oh, <laughs> and then, yeah, because that now they had been betrayed again by Akia's ally, Macedon, um, who was apparently um, the king of Macedon, Philip V, who was under the influence of Demetrios of Pharos uh, from an island near Issa, which we've seen earlier in this video, and yeah. Illyria. Um, so everything is always connected, um, <laughs> but yeah, for the Messanians, it went um, back and forth, and even in in the period under Augustus in the 30s BC, the Spartans still tried to conquer Messina one last time. Augustus was not pleased, even when the Spartan king, or whatever his exact position was, we do not know, when he offered to, or when he actually renamed his son. To Caesar, uh, to Julius Caesar Augustus, <laughs> Augustus would not forgive him and depose him <laughs> because he wasn't having um, the re-erection of the Helot system in Messenia. Yeah. So basically, that's why the Messenians are there, and I think it's great to see this this rivalry between them and Sparta. I mean, oh, it's more than a rivalry between the Messenians; it's it's a fight for the existence, and it's yeah. good to portray that. Yeah, definitely. They don't have any unique units at the minute, I don't believe. Um, but on the uh, on the Peloponnese, there is a generic AOR unit, which is the Peloponnesian Hoplites as well, or the Hoplites. Uh, but yeah, that story kind of reminds me of uh, the of the Aetolians allying someone and then <laughs> and then plundering it. Just reminds me, which Crusade was it when the Crusaders sacked Byzantium? I can't no, remember. The fourth, the fourth Crusade. Yeah. yeah, that just reminds me yeah. of that. Just like <laughs> we'll go through your lands. Oh, yeah. sorry, we just sacked your greatest city. Oh, well, no. Oh Whoops. no, we never meant to do that. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me and thank you guys for watching and guys and girls, I should say, and everyone. Um, we hope you enjoyed the video and there will be more RAS content in the coming weeks on Red Z's channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can tell you that. And uh, we are building towards the, the next release, of course, of RIS 0.6. And as you can see, um, we've made great progress with the factions, the units, and the map, which is at this moment being completely finished. So um, there's going to be so much new stuff you won't believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. So stay tuned, guys. Make sure you do subscribe. Make sure you do like this video if you've appreciated it. Uh, appreciated it because there might be another couple of videos coming with Miles Loss uh, in the future as well. So. Uh, keep that in mind um and make sure you check out the greek aor units and the uh, and the map showcase if you're not seeing the map showcase as well and stay tuned because as i've said already every weekend guys is gonna be a in-depth uh, development update on version 0.6 all the way to release so every weekend you're going to be full of ras content just like this so thank you very much for watching guys thanks once again to the mod team and especially um Mausolos. so thank you very much uh, for watching guys and i will see you all again on the next video bye bye <laughs>